Welcome, Viking guest. You are now in Memphis, Tennessee, and we are at Elvis Presley's Graceland. My name is Angie Marchese. I'm the Vice President of Archives and Exhibitions here at Elvis's home, and I'm going to show you around Graceland. Now, Graceland was actually kind of the fulfillment of a childhood promise to one day buy his parents a big house. Elvis was able to do that in 1957. He passed away here in 1977, and we opened up for tours in 1982. Now, while you're here at Graceland, there's so much to see and do. Not only do you get to tour the mansion that Elvis lived in, you actually get to see how he lived, and you get to see who Elvis was off stage when you tour the mansion property. Afterwards, you come over here to Elvis Presley's Memphis. It's our entertainment complex. You'll be able to see cars, jumpsuits, gold records, and even Elvis's private plane, the Lisa Marie. In this episode, we're gonna focus on one aspect of Elvis's life and career, and that's fashion as part of Viking Fashion Week. Even before Elvis was a teen idol, he was very self-confident in the way that he approached fashion. He would turn his collar up in high school because he thought his neck was a little too long. He wore his hair different than anyone else and a little bit longer. He liked light colors like pink and he was not afraid to wear them even before he was Elvis Presley. And when Elvis did become famous, it was that sense of style that skyrocketed him and made him different from the rest. Not only was his stage fashion at the time edgy, contemporary, but it also was influential. Before influencers were a thing, Elvis was influencing everything from the way people wore their hair, the way they walked, the way they wore their shirts, and even the way that they chose their color patterns. Now let's talk about some of Elvis's most iconic looks. We're gonna start in the 1950s with the famous Gold LeMay suit. It was custom made by Nudies of Hollywood and Elvis wore it on stage several times. However, he only wore it once in its entirety as it was extremely hot to wear on stage. Normally, Elvis would wear the gold jacket paired with a black pair of trousers. He enjoyed watching the flash of the jacket as he moved on stage. And it also became kind of a marketing gimmick for Colonel Parker. If Elvis was performing in your hometown, it would cost the venue one amount, but if the gold suit was involved, the gold suit had its own price and it would arrive day of show by armored car, which drew up press, which drew up ticket sales. Thank you, thank you. But who could forget the 1968 comeback special? Elvis appears on stage in a two-piece black leather outfit designed by Bill Ballou, who was hired by NBC to re-envision what Elvis would look like. Bill was the one that came up with the black leather outfit idea. Elvis loved it. And not only did it set a new tone for Elvis's sense of style, it led to Elvis's iconic jumpsuits also designed by Mr. Bill Ballou. So in 1969, when Elvis signed his contract to perform at the International Hotel in Las Vegas, Elvis became the first artist to set up what we now know as a residency. He started with a two-piece outfit. It was modeled after his karate gi, a long tunic with a straight pair of pants. The problem was Elvis moved too much on stage and would often rip the seat of the pants. So. In 1970, Elvis's designer, Bill Ballou, came up with the idea of let's merge these two pieces and create the one-piece jumpsuit. Our very first jumpsuit that Elvis wears on stage is on display here in the Dress to Rock exhibition. And it actually has two zippers, one for the bottom of the jumpsuit and one for the top. The next one involved to have only one zipper and that would stay that same way throughout Elvis's entire career. The jumpsuits are made of wool gabardine. They're lined in silk, which made them very heavy and hot on stage. But it also was a very durable fabric. It moved with him, it breathed with him. And the outfits became just about as important as the songs Elvis was singing. In the early 70s, the jumpsuits were very plainly styled with French macrame, you had beading, you had brocade collars. And then the capes came along and those big belts. Elvis started wearing those around late 1971 and would wear those two pieces together through 1974. 
The capes and the jumpsuits also became very elaborate in style, each taking on their own personality and also getting their own nicknames. Everything from the firework to the lion suit to even the purple owl. A funny story is the purple owl actually got its name from Elvis on tour when Elvis points to the butt buckle on the outfit from stage and says, for those of you who can't see this, it's an owl. So here in the Dress to Rock exhibit, we have over 100 pieces of Elvis's stage fashion going all the way back to 1969 through his last jumpsuit he wore on stage in June of 1977. One of the most iconic jumpsuits that we have on display is the American Eagle suit worn by Elvis in his 1973 Aloha from Hawaii special. This is one of the only jumpsuits that Elvis actually asked for when talking to designer Bill Ballou. It was because the show was being seen via satellite in 40 nations and Elvis wanted to wear something that said America. They came up with several design ideas, including the American flag, a map of the United States, and finally settling on our national bird, the American Eagle, with a red, white, and blue color scheme. He also had a habit of throwing things into the audience, not just scarves, but with this particular outfit, it was belts and capes as well. The first belt he takes off during the show and hands it to some fans sitting in the audience. And at the very end of the Aloha concert, Elvis takes his cape off and tosses it into the audience. Bill then has to make another cape for his January performances in Las Vegas. That cape and belt that Bill had to make was given to Elvis's karate instructor, Ed Parker. Finally, Elvis had a final cape and belt made for the outfit, and we have actually all three of those capes, including the one he threw into the audience in our collection today. Welcome to the Making of Elvis, the movie exhibition here at Elvis Presley's Graceland. The Elvis film debuted in June 2022, and it introduced Elvis to a whole new audience. Baz Luhrmann and the film creators actually came to Memphis five years ago to begin this project. They lived here in the Graceland Archives with us, going through documents, photos, film footage, interview clips, anything they could grab to make sure that this movie was as true and as authentic to Elvis as possible. None of the film was shot here in Memphis, but you couldn't tell you weren't on Bill Street or right inside Elvis Presley's Graceland. That's how much attention to detail they paid. Along with Baz Luhrmann, the movie featured Oscar-winning costume designer, Katherine Martin. Her and her team brought Elvis's fashion to the big screen, featuring Austin in over 90 outfits, ranging everything from the first outfits Elvis wore on stage in the 50s, through the iconic jumpsuits, and of course, the black leather suit. One of my favorite scenes and one of my favorite costumes from the film is on display here in the movie exhibit. It's the scene from Graceland when they're meeting with Colonel Tom and going over the new Elvis Presley merchandise line. And Elvis, i.e. Austin, sitting on the sofa wearing a pink waist jacket and black slacks. And of course, the sailor's hat. That outfit is actually inspired by an exact outfit that Elvis wore when he first appeared in Las Vegas in 1956. It was that unique twist that Catherine was able to do to take pieces from Elvis's timeline and put it in different locations. Early in the movie, you see Elvis in a Crown Electric uniform. That uniform was actually inspired by the uniforms that Elvis would have worn along with his fellow employees when he was a truck driver for the Crown Electric Company. Not only did Catherine and her team capture the uniform for photographs, they were actually able to bring to life the colors and the texture of the outfits. Because you have to remember, a lot of their reference material was black and white. Being able to host the first Elvis movie exhibit in the States has been a great honor. From conception through installation, and telling this amazing story of how they brought the film Elvis to life. It has been such a pleasure showing you around where I work, Elvis Presley's Graceland, and giving you a little insight into who Elvis was, not only as an artist, but as a fashion icon. And don't forget, Viking Cruises offers a day excursion. If you're here in Memphis, you actually get to come see all of this great stuff in person. My name's Angie, and I've been so happy to show you around Graceland and can't wait to see you here in person.